All right, class, Professor Quigley here helping you on the last challenge activity of week five, 5 5.17. Um, this is where we're going to use brute force to solve an equation. Now, just to give you a little insight into why this problem is going to be so difficult for us. One, because for loops are new to us, so we might not be that comfortable writing for loops. Um, in addition to that, we're actually going to write one for loop inside of another for loop. That's why it's called brute force. So if you can imagine that what we're doing um, is we're trying to just go through massive amounts of number combinations here until we can figure out when that condition equals true. Um, and actually, if you read through this problem, you'll find out that it's possible that we still might not be able to come up with a solution. So we're going to do a little check here at the very end. So let's go ahead and hop out our pseudocode document here. So in here, the user is going to be inputting literally, um, let's see, at first six different variables. So let's go ahead and get to work and knock out the easy part. So we're going to click start. And the first thing we're going to do over here, if you notice in our pseudocode document, it says declare variables a1, b1, and c1 as integers one line per declaration. Um, then we're going to see declare variables a2, b2, c2, um, and then we're going to declare some x, y's, and solutions, and, and we'll just go for that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say integer a1, and then integer b1, integer c1, and then we'll keep going I'm actually going to copy and paste this word here. So that way I can do integer a2, integer b2, integer c2. Now, we're also going to have integer x. Now, what else does it tell us in the pseudocode? We need integer y. And then we also need um, a variable called x solution. So we'll do integer x s o l u integer solution. All right. Now what we need to do is we need to allow the user to type in those six different values for those different variables. So we're going to say a1 equals get next input. And I'm going to copy and paste I'm going to copy and paste the whole line to make this a little easier for me. So a1 equals get next input. I'm going to paste that and change it to b1. Paste it. Go back to the beginning. Change this to c1. Then I'm going to do the whole thing again. However, this time it's going to be a2. And then I'm going to hit to and the shortcut I'm doing is I'm hitting end on the keyboard and then I'm hitting enter and then I'm holding control and hitting V so real fast way to um, move without moving your mouse here so C2 alright so let's see if I got them all A1 B1 C1 A2 B2 C2 and I was confusing alright so now I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna say X solution equals minus 99 oops because it tells me assign the variable x solution the value of 99. Now, here's where I'm going to write my first for loop. Now, I can break this down and tell you exactly what's going to happen here, but just know that if you're following along, this isn't really, I mean, it's pseudocode, but like you could take it and type it in exactly how that should be. So I'm going to go ahead and hit, I'll just type it out. So I'm going to hit for x x is going to be what we're going to count with and we're going to give it a starting value so x equals negative 10 and we do semicolon and then we're going to input our condition which basically means as long as x is less than or equal to 10 um, we want this loop to keep going I'm going to do my semicolon here and then I'm going to say what do I do to keep incrementing that loop we're going to say x um, equals x plus okay so this is our basic for loop where we say for um, we're gonna loop over 
between negative 10 to positive 10 plus 1. So to break that down, uh, remember a for loop is when we know how many um, loops we're going to have to make between one point um, from a start into a finish. So x is going to be our counter. So our first loop through x is going to equal minus 10. And then uh, that minus 10 is going to equal whatever it is in the first case, minus 10 plus 1. So that way the next loop, it's going to be x equals negative 9, um, which will be negative 9 plus 1. And so you can see how it'll keep counting um, until it meets this condition where x um, is less than or equal to 10. So once we get to the point where that's no longer true, we'll exit out of that loop. All right. What we're going to do then is we're going to put another loop here because um, what we're going to do is for each one of these x variables, we're going to evaluate the y input. So I'm going to go one, two, three spaces over. Now I'm going to do a for loop where I loop over all the y values. So this is where I say for uh, y equals, same thing, we'll start it off at negative 10, semicolon. Then we're going to do where y is less than or equal to 10 semicolon and then we're going to count the y um, we're going to increment the y just like we did the x's where y equals y plus one now i'm going to drop down to a new line inside of that for loop one two three we're going to have an if condition um, this is where we're going to say if all of this stuff equals true, we're going to output a number. So we're going to do if the value of multiplying a1 times x plus multiplying b1 times y is equal to c1 and value of multiplying a2 times x plus multiplying b2 times y is equal to c2. That is a mouthful. And I think that's the reason why the problem starts off up here uh, talking about um, scientific equations and stuff like that and so this is in the real world this is going to be the equivalent of your company hiring some mathematician or some physics expert to um, come up with this really complicated solution to crunch a lot of numbers they're going to hand you these formulas like this in a pseudocode document and then you're just going to be told hey translate this into code so that way our mathematician or our physics rocket engineer over here doesn't have to do all this math by hand um, so I'm going to say if, and then I'm going to do um, in parentheses, we're going to say, and here we're going to have another set of parentheses. We're going to say a1 times x, and I'm just following along with the pseudocode document, plus b1 times y, that equals c1 that has to be true and a2 times x plus b2 times y close that if that's equal to C2. So let me make sure I got that right. So let's follow along here. So if A1 times X plus B1 times Y is equal to C1 and A2 times X plus B2 times Y equals to C2. Okay. So if that's true, then we're going to go into that if statement. We're going to go one, two, three, put x to output. Then we're going to put that space. Because remember, we're looping here. We're going to have a space between our outputs. Uh, then we're going to put y to output. Um, and then we're going to say x solution equals x. All right. So that should be our complicated logic right now. Um, final thing here, we're going to go all the way back and we're going to do one final if statement. Solution equals minus 
one, two, three. So if solution equals 99, because if you remember, we started out by saying X solution equals negative 99. So over here, we're going to crunch through a whole bunch of series of numbers um, to find out um, if we can actually set that X solution. And if we can, great. Um, if we can't, then we'll know the uh, solution was what we started off with. Um, so if we can't set it, then that means the number is what it was when we originally started, which is what we have written here. So if the X solution equals the original value that we started, then we're going to output to the screen no solution to output. All right. That was a lot of typing. Uh, let's, let's see if we got this correct. We hit check. Uh, let's see what we did wrong. Line 31 indention has two spaces, but should be a multiple of three. All right. I think I just forgot a space. So let me do check that out. So if I go one, two, yep, I only have two spaces. So it's one, two, put my third space in there, hit check. Boom, all done. So can't believe we got that all right. Save it be one space. Um, so if you have any questions, you want to take a deeper dive into this problem, I will get my mathematician hat on and we will figure this out together. Um, but until then, thank you for completing all your challenge activities for week five. Um, I promise you the course is going to keep getting easier. This problem probably was a little difficult, but um, outside of this problem, it should be getting easier for us because we're starting to understand what variables are how to assign values to them, um, how to do a little bit of operations and do some outputs and stuff like that. So with the help of this pseudocode document, I hope that you were able to get through this. If you have any questions, follow up with me in the discussion threads. Take care.